Oh god. But yeah, I love this intro. The Emperor of Kiss the Sun. What the fuck was that? <laughs> what the fuck was that? He sold the intro. <laughs> <laughs> Which is probably the best comment. Yeah. What the fuck was that? I was about to thank you for a job well done on stopping that Inquisitor, but then I remember yeah. how headachingly retarded you are. Oh of fucking hell, I, I forgot. <laughs> Fuck it. Oh god damn it, Emperor. Contact people telepathically. I'm the motherfucking Emperor. Ah, um, so why haven't you ever done that earlier? Like, before the Texas Fuse devices are born? I have you fucking Chiquita Man. <laughs> Chiquita Man. <laughs> But yeah, this is actually what uh, Fable was talking about earlier. He does do this from time to time, just I not as often as people back. would like. Oh, really? Huh. I haven't heard anything at all. Have you ever used telepathy? No, I haven't, sir. I'm not a psycho. I think. Then shut the fuck up about it. <laughs> You're obviously not aware that using telepathy to communicate like that can be really straining on the mind. But my lord, aren't you the greatest psycho in the galaxy? Shouldn't a little bit of telepathy be like taking a casual killing stroll to reveal that unarmed Eldar to you? <laughs> a casual killing stroll to a foe of unarmed Eldar. <laughs> the Eldar always gets screwed over by 40k. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Yeah, I mean, they started <laughs> it. They legitimately started it. Yeah. Every time an avatar of Cain, which is their war god, shows up, they usually get bitch slapped by something. Which, uh, that's their most powerful unit, by the way. Oh, wow. Whenever they need to summon an avatar of Cain, they quite literally have to kill one of themselves. To summon him, and usually it does nothing. It was easier in the past, when my psyche wasn't ravished to losing, and splintered by the endless agonizing torment I received from sitting on this throne. Slowly but surely, I'm having my soul torn apart by the entropy of the war grinding against the powers of my mind, while my body decays in perpetual pain, and I'm being forced to live through every second of it. Uh, endless torment, my lord? Lunacy? Your soul being torn apart? Well, I... You don't have to remind me about what I just <laughs> said, you fucking asshole. I'm not that senile just <laughs> not that senile like just that, my lord. I'm so sorry. Isn't it obvious? I yeah, he does look in constant pain. Throne for 10,000 years, slowly rotting yeah. away while constantly powering the astronaut. It's so strange that he's even still alive. He's only through his psychic might that he must still be alive, considering he is literally bones. Ain't he like, like half living or something like that? It's hard to define if he's truly alive or not. Well, he is truly alive through his psychic power, but we're not... Like, you can tell physically he's not well. And fighting off the yeah. horrors of the world. Like, his soul is working just fine. It's just his body is in shambles. Uh, the best way to describe it, Chrono, is every single day he gets fed, uh, like, 1,000 psychers to mm -hmm. keep him going. Oh, okay. The thing is, the reason... Uh, a lot of people theorize that the only reason he's, like, not fully dead yet is because of his perpetual nature. But even oh. then, people are like, probably that's not true. Oh, okay. Um, I mean, he does... People quite literally, in order to find their way into the warp, they use... I forget what it's called off the top of my head. But it's basically an extension of his will showing them where to go in the warp. Which is still insane. Mm -hmm. Yes, Stromum or Astronomica. I don't fucking remember the name. Time. It's no walk in the fucking park, you dev shit. Just sitting still without moving for this long is horrible. Can you even begin to imagine the muscle cramps I have experienced? Also, my nose has been itching like a lawnmower <laughs> ever since I was put here. It doesn't even exist anymore, but it just keeps itching. And I know exactly who to blame for it. Oh. No, no, I hate you and everything you stand for. But phantom itching is probably the best thing you ever invented. <laughs> That's what they refer to the Emperor as, but I'm not sure how to pronounce it, so... Because we can't understand what the Nurgle is saying without subtitles. Oh, 
Let's go destroy mankind and then he will join us as a new chaos god! Justice plan! <laughs> oh, oh, this excites me! Oh god, fuck, it's Lanesh! Uh, that was all four of the Chaos Gods. The last one oh, was God. Corn being pissed. Why did they show <laughs> Corn? Why did they show Slanesh but not Corn? I don't fucking know because he's always sitting on his throne of skulls. Listen, I that's no excuse. Yeah, uh, I fucking hate Slanesh, as you can probably tell why. Uh, yeah, she's not great. They, funny enough, the Chaos Gods do have a rule where three of them cannot gang up on one of them and, uh, you know, just destroy them. That's actually a rule in between themselves that they hold themselves to. However, there have been times where they have ganged up on one specific uh, yeah, if, god and they got too much, like Zinch that one time. Yeah, if the god gets too powerful, they will like direct their followers to fuck up whatever plan they're doing. It, they basically keep each other in check. They work together only until one of them gets too big for the britches, then they turn against each other. Is that what happened to the Emperor? Or... The or... Emperor was never on their side. He's just a powerful spike psyker who hates chaos. Oh, okay. Which is understandable once you see the Chaos Gods. Also, uh, as I've said before, Zeech is an undecisive mollusk who literally has so many plans going on that he he's not even sure which one is actually working. Uh, sometimes he does screw with uh, different space reading chapters. Like this one chapter that wanted the pray to the Emperor to have the ability to know when someone's lying because they worked with the Inquisition. <laughs> Oh no. Guess how well that went, Fable. <sighs> what chapter is that one, Mac? I don't remember their name, but uh, afterwards the the, the the chapter master went insane and they've been turned to chaos. Yeah. <sighs> Why? <laughs> because they worked with the Inquisition. You know why. Listen, I get that the Inquisition allows some semblance of heresy, but come on now. Come I on. mean, they didn't know they got this power from Zeech. They were praying to the Emperor. Zeech just thought it would be funny to see what would happen if he did give them that ability. Hmm. Because the I... basically the chapter master was like, he doesn't like that he could accidentally be killing innocents. So he wanted the ability to tell if they were heretics or not, basically. I hate Zinch. I really do. <laughs> everyone, ha well, not everyone hates the Chaos Gods. To think that you suffered this absolutely atrocious fate to keep mankind alive. You truly are the graceful guardian of our entire species. Thanks. I get that a lot. So, yes, sitting on this for an extended period of time is absolutely great. They fucking awful. Well, what they need is profanity all the time. Shut up, you fucking cockstodies. And fuck my fucking nose is killing me. <laughs> Shut up, you cockstodies. Do it fucking fast. I'm feeling a giant warp storm incoming. Uh, so, how about this trade allegiance, huh? <laughs> 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 ah! Meanwhile. <laughs> yeah. We'll learn, you'll learn about the Traitor Primarchs and the Traitor Legions in a minute. Everyone, you have oh, to listen. This is where we're on Mars, by the way. With You can see the Adeptus uh, oh, Mechanicus. Okay. It better be important, number 87453. We are busy staring at this piece of metal. We've received absolutely technorific news. Ooh, did they move toast to six stage today? Even better. They're <laughs> <fast. laughs> Uh, yes, Toaster Sex Day, by the way, Fable. He's not saying anything which tells me a lot. The new STC <laughs> planet right on the border of the segmented solar in the so called Aurora subsector. Is yeah. This really true? Yes. 
an expedition fleet is on its way right now. Oh, I just saw all my words. Oh, I just spoiled my lobes. Oh, damn, I'm still alive. Yeah. Hurt your ammo, Mortarian. These are all the traitor Primarchs, by the way. Half of them term traitor. Ah. Uh, oh, okay. Lower guard, Conrad, and run. Some of them, you can understand why they turn traitor, and it's overall kind of sad. Some of them were just being idiots. Mm -hmm. Like Perturabo. My sons, created in the laboratories of Luna, made out of my very own genes. To think that they would ever fucking be Well, my lord, at least Lehman Ross Ferris now has Vulcan, Rebel Dawn, Robert Gullivan, Sanguinius, Lionel Johnson, Jack and I can't... But yeah, you can probably choose one of the uh, loyalist primarchs to be under, or which one you like from this. That's not fucking good enough. <laughs> I mean, I was a great fucking father to all of them, even if they all had their options. Lying, he was not a good dad. <laughs> I like that you come back to just yell that. He was not a good dad. He wasn't. He's a liar. <laughs> <laughs> I love that you come back with that immediately, people. I was asking you about the toaster sex day that they were talking about. Okay, I did hear that part. I just, I was away because someone called me for help, but like, okay. I don't know what to say to that. Because that <laughs> sounds like something the Mechanicus would do. Okay, we're moving forward. Agnes being a nerdy fucking bookworm, and the psyker not ever being able to stand up to the brothers who bullied them over it. Full brain being- Uh, Magnus actually pretty much did everything wrong when his brother, Lehman Russ, was basically accusing him of basically heresy and basically took him to actual court. The problem with the Thousand Sons and Magnus is they think they're so far above everyone else hmm. that at one point during this court hearing, he decided to make a poetry slam. Yes. Damn. The, the thing about the Thousand Sons is they had the most psychers out of any of the legions. However, because Magnus had a insatiable hunger to study the warp and not have any kind of um, protective measures about it, he was used against him. It's yeah. like his brothers were kind of yeah. dicks about it, but it's just basically, he really should have done it. After the moment. yeah, after the poetry thing, basically what happened is the emperor just asked him to chill out with the warp shit, basically to just stop for a while. He did not. Yes, he did not, which led to him meeting Zeech, and basically what happened is Zeech basically pretended to lose to him because he knew Magnus's ego would grow even fucking higher. Yeah. Yeah. You wanted to say something? No, just just the fact that Magnus really should have taken it slow, but he really wanted to study everything. Yeah, and then there's Fulgrim. Fulgrim is one I actually feel bad for. I hate the reason he turned evil. It's very stupid how he turned evil. His secret quest to obtain more fabulous hair than me. <laughs> to this day, he has not succeeded. Fulgrim has this problem where... I know the I know the court was rigged, but Magnus wasn't helping himself in the slightest. But yeah, uh, Fulgrim, the way he turned was basically he found a sword that was basically possessed by a demon, and he picked it up and it started to slowly corrupt him. It's kind of stupid, but yeah. He found a phallic shaped item and kept it. It was oh, called. God only knows reason. Chrono, the name of the blade was the Layer Blade, by the way. So, yeah. Oh, okay. It's... F but basically, the... I always felt bad for him because... Fulgrim basically didn't have a great start, especially on the world he was on. And he always was trying to perform better than his brothers because he felt... Uh, he was the shortest of all of his brothers. He always felt... I forget the word exactly... But he had a complex insecure? about it. Yeah, insecure oh. about that. Oh, okay. Because also his legion was one of the smallest due to them having a gene uh, defect, which led to them being like only 200 compared to like the 100,000 that everyone else had. 
Oh shit. Yeah. They just had like a lot of problems and by the time that they actually found him, they almost went extinct as a legion. Yeah. Uh also but here's the thing, he gave him like a rousing speech telling him how proud he was of them, that the Emperor was so like moved by the speech that he named his le their legion the children of the Emperor. Oh, okay. Or the Emperor's children, but yeah. Oh yeah, fucking Portorabo. Always so volatile and childish, constantly bitching and moaning when he did a get as he wanted. I don't feel bad about Portorabo. He was fucking. He was a dumbass who always had the problem of always thinking his way was the right way. And fuck yeah, you and if so you do. The thing about Portorabo was he had the ability to tell, like, he had the ability to look at something and instantly tell its weakness. So he kind of understood how it worked because of its weaknesses. However, oh, because okay. he didn't want to stand up for himself and actually talk about his problems, he became a siege master and he hated it. So he literally oh. fell because he was a giant baby. Yeah, he has I'm this not problem. Even kidding. He literally has this problem of his first opinion is his only opinion of you. <laughs> oh god. He, uh, he like as soon as he got to his le he was united with his legion and he learned that they had failed a siege. He did decimation, which basically means he had a vote or a lottery where basically 10% of the Legion would be killed by the other 90%. Uh, okay. And basically, here here's the thing. He wouldn't even say nice things about him whenever they did their job. He's like, yes, that's what I expect of you. He basically, all he did with his Marines is basically with the Iron Warriors is just throw them at problems. <laughs> Which is I'm still honestly surprised they even joined him when they fell in chaos. Which is like, you hate your sons. Why would they follow you? I think <laughs> the main reason was is they were basically good little robots. Now they didn't really have a automaty or you know, anymore. There were some loyalist iron warriors who unfortunately died. Who were the iron within, as they're called? And there's uh, Portorabo. Constantly smelled like shit from day one. <laughs> Lord, I like that that's the one thing he says about Mortarian, is I always smelled like shit. It's not wrong. Morty was ugly and smells ugly still to this day. Yes, he uh, the, he grew up on a death world where, yeah, he just smelled like shit. And... Choir boy with a massive victim complex. Conrad could... Oh yeah, fucking Lorgar. Uh, he's uh... Quite literally, he his whole thing was he was quite literally a choir boy or a priest. And as soon as the emperor arrived, he like pledged himself as his new god. And the emperor gave him that look that you just a pure disgust. He was a uh, he was a religious zealot who believed his father was a god. The emperor, being the atheist he is, thought, "I don't like you. I'm gonna have to teach you not to do that no more." And also, he did it in the worst way possible with yeah, someone. Yeah, <laughs> he did it in the worst way possible. He like, he's just like, I'm tired of this, I'm gonna destroy your home. This is he, your punishment. He's basically like, forced him, using his psychic might, he forced him and his legion onto the ground and saying, is this what a god does to you? And he's like, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, he should have just tried to roll with it a bit for freaking Lorgar. He didn't really, uh... And then there's Conrad Curse. Conrad Curse is the best way to describe him is evil Batman. Oh, wow. It, yes, but the thing with Conrad Curse is he had visions of the future of him doing evil things. And he thought, because this is a future, this is my this is my fate. I can't do anything to change it. He was insane. And according to what people say about his uh, Primark book, if you look at it and look at the Legion, it's like a reflection of how messed up curse was as a person that's why he hated his legion because yeah. they're mostly made up of like uh criminals criminals, criminals yeah. serial killers every bad instance and uh, he he hated them but everyone's just like it's because they're a reflection of who you are whether yeah. you like it or not <laughs> yeah he hated his legion because they basically his home world was full of criminals and originally when he tried to you know fix the world by being evil batman when he went away the crime rate went back up because Batman's no longer there to beat the shit out of the criminals or scare them to the point of not wanting to do bad things. Yeah, because he didn't fix the problems. He just scared it into. He just scared them to the point where they're like, "Oh yes, we have to fear him." But as soon as he left, like you said, Mech, they thought, "Oh, we have nothing left to fear. Let's go back to being idiots." 
Yeah, funny he enough... Didn't, he there... didn't fix the problem. He just made it worse. Funny enough, there is a book for uh, the Night Lords where you actually feel sad for him from what I heard because one of them quite literally put, he's like, I don't know why I'm here, but why I originally became a Night Lord is I just want to be a hero. <laughs> well, that is... Soul Hunt series or something. Yeah, but that sounds depressing as hell for them. Yeah... That's kind of like why a lot in the lore as, as I, it's kind of why right now the fandom kind of makes fun of the Night Lords as a, as a faction because like, well they're literally pitiful. They're you quite, feel bad for them because there's nothing interesting about them. There's nothing going for them, and honestly, they don't really have a lot. They're the weakest in terms of fighting Astartes. Like in a straight up fight, they would not win against any other Astartes Legion. Yeah, and a lot of, like I said, a lot of people make fun of them because sometimes in certain uh, chap, like certain books, they're like, "Oh yeah, we're gonna com we're gonna commit like we're gonna commit a raid on this planet." Oh no, a small group of Astartes are coming after us. Run away! But that's... <laughs> it's literally like that. It's really stupid. Yeah. <laughs> then stand the little fucking sunlight and kept feeling persecuted by his fantasies about a dark and depressing future. Yeah. And See? Ron was constantly mad. Extremely, earth-shatteringly, unreasonably fuck-ass mad. Yeah. Probably because he had those fucking nails in his brain. Funny enough, Agron was actually supposed to be apparently the therapist for all of the other Primarchs at one point. Yeah, he was supposed to be like a paladin or something and care for others, but that was stolen from him. Yeah, because the people on his world, he was forced to be a slave gladiator, and, uh... When he refused to kill a friend in combat, they put a thing called the Butcher's Nails into him, which I already told you what those do. And they, you can't remove them without killing the host. Oh, wow. Alpharius Omegon had um. huge anonymity issues. Oh, yeah, and fucking Alpharius Omegon. Alpharius and Omegon, because it's two separate Primarchs who are leaders of the Alpha Legion. And the whole thing with the Alpha Legion is they're espionage, so you don't know shit about them. The thing about Alpharius and Omegon is they're technically the same person, but they're completely different in terms of strategy because it's weird. They're... It's warp spaghetti <laughs> nonsense. We don't even know if any of the stories about them are real or true. We just know that they sometimes show up and do shit. We don't even know if they're actually on the side. They're actually traitors. Mac, I'm pretty sure the Alpha Legion is in your house right now eating all your eating all your lunch. I'm sorry. Well, what little, well, I guess I'm gonna die this week because what little food I got today. Fable's just like, I hate to break it to you, but I think they're, they're in your house. They're quite, <laughs> literally, let me tell you this. The first line in the book for the Alpha Legion, Chrono, is I am Alpharius and that is a lie. <laughs> Yeah, because there's this one time I was watching a video of someone explaining, like, the uh, Primarchs and the Legions in, like, a really short amount of time. Just simplifying them. When they went to um, the Alpha Legion, they literally just said for about a minute, I am Alpharius, I am Alpharius, I am Alpharius. <laughs> and then the comment section is like, that's good, but you forgot, I am Alpharius. And you're like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And the guy <laughs> literally replied. The guy literally replied with, "That is a fair point. That is the Alpha <laughs> Legion in a nutshell." Yeah. The thing. Yeah, with, let's go. The th reason why we say the line of Al "I am Alpharius and that is a lie" is also because all of them look like their Primarch. Like quite literally, if you look down their mask, they've literally had their faces surgically designed to look like their yeah. Primarch. And what here's the problem. Mm -hmm. And also the problem is Alpharius and Omegon are about the size as a normal Astartes. Oh my god. Yeah, and another problem is GW, they claim to know what the Alpha Legion is, but if you look at any of the books, I'm 100% sure the lore masters or like the head writers in charge of that are like, we've lost track of this storyline so long ago, we're gonna pretend like we know what's going on with them. <laughs> That's how it feels like, and I'm 100% sure We lost track the truth. of this story, yeah. like, 20 years ago now. They also- the We have no fucking clue. <laughs> the We're gonna wing it. The Alpha Legion also has this ability to use their sort of strange power armor where they can disguise themselves as any other Legion. So they can be fucking anywhere and pretend to be anyone who might have died. 
Yeah, Damn. and the dumb part is apparently there's some stories that say like how Astartes use the planet to get more like recruits. There's apparently a thing where they don't do that. They're like, hey, we're going to steal some of your soldiers. So you know that one guy you've known for like 10 years? Yeah, he was one of us this whole time. We we implanted it, We implanted some things in his brain. He's ours now. It's just like, why? <laughs> and they're like, because. Why not? Because it's, so <laughs> really why like not? That. it's so confusing. And their symbol is a hydra because it's supposed to be like when you cut off one head, <laughs> yeah, two more appear. And it's so stupid because I think in one of the books, the literally one of the Alpha Legion's um, warbands literally said, literally said, I am Alpharius. And another one was just like, listen, we know that. Stop saying that. We don't even know what the hell we're doing anymore. <laughs> one of their own soldiers literally said, yeah, but we don't know what the hell we're doing anymore. What is this about? They're even, they're Why are we fighting anymore? They yeah, don't know. even the soldiers are confused. That's how bad it is for them. Oh <laughs> my god. Yeah. Just, a, uh... just imagine you've been fighting for so long that you forgot why you're fighting in the first place. That is actually yeah. a that is actually a meme for uh for Metal Gear Solid. <laughs> oh no. Oh my god, I didn't even know that. Oh my god. Quite literally, there's one dude who's been on so many sides that he's not even sure where... Which We're not even sure whatever side he's on. It's like, I'm on this side for one moment, and then I'm on that side for another. What fucking side am I on now? That's Elfars. Yeah, that's pretty much... We don't know what the fuck the Alpha Legion is doing. We're not even sure they know what they're doing. Yeah, because, and... like, one moment they help... One moment they help Chaos, and the next they help the Imperium. It's just like, what the hell are you guys planning? They don't know. <laughs> they're just doing it because they're doing it. Yeah. And they yeah, do it because they think it's funny. <laughs> Honestly, I think you would probably like the Hor the Sons of Horus Legion before they, tur they, were before they were called the Sons of Horus uh chrono because they were called oh. the lunar wolves oh okay you can probably look them up in their design later but yeah nope, but then nope. He they're originally on a plan of gangsters <laughs> <laughs> they're the true gangsters more like 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 mad max style gangsters like motorbikes <laughs> and everything oh uh, okay Okay, here we go. I'd agree with you, but no. Even the loyal ones were flawed as fuck. Okay, which one? Who is your favorite uh, Primark fable? Um, I really do like Robot Gorilla Man. <laughs> and, um, Robot Gorilla Man. <laughs> Robot Gorilla Man. <laughs> yeah, Robot Gorilla Man's really cool. Roboto Gilliman is what he means. He, but he has an Eldar waifu oh. now, so we'll see where it goes from there. No, I mean Robot Damn. Gorilla Grew. <laughs> really Robot Gorilla <laughs> Grew. I, I don't think Liam Russ was that bad, but he also had this problem of being the strongest, and he kind of didn't win all of his fights, though I kind of wish he did. Hey, that's not too bad. was a brutish ass crack with a survival of the fittest mindset, thinking all quote-unquote weakness within the human species. Funny enough about Ferris Manus is that early on, like, when he realized they were just becoming the Mechanicus and replacing their bits with basically robot bits, he was like, huh, when this whole, like, Horus heresy thing is over, I should tell my sons to stop this. <laughs> Tried. Uh, 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 he died before. He was one of the first Primarchs to die in the, in the Horus heresy. Yeah. Yeah, we literally got no lore about him. Yeah, he's... He had a good relationship with Fulgrim, but besides that, we don't know all about them. Other than he was called... First, man, his legion's called the Iron Hands. Vulcan died all the fucking time, and was always too damn nice. Vulcan is one of my favorite of the Primarchs. Not my very favorite, but he's up there. But yeah, he has the thing where he can die and always come back. No, oh. Fable, you're not Elfarius. That is a lie. <laughs> <laughs> Dorn was just way too uptight. And brutally honest, never being capable of even yeah, he can't. a little lie to make someone feel better about himself. Funny enough, Rogo Dorn of all the dads of 40k was probably one of the best dads. He also, uh, uh, Rogo Dorn, and uh, Rogo Dorn, sorry, and Gilliman actually had some really interesting plans for after the, uh, after <coughs> the heresy. 
because Rotodon wanted to actually <laughs> fix up the messes that the heresy did. He wanted his legion <laughs> to actually start building beautiful pieces of art and buildings and stuff like that. Gilliman believed that after the heresy, his men should start studying stuff on like taxes and <laughs> becoming feudal lords to try to fix everything. Yeah, he basically wanted them to become statesmen or senators. Yeah, to actually do... He was teaching his men how to do it in a way that would actually help everyone. They actually had proper plans, while I think the other ones were just like, eh, we'll see what happens. Yeah, Lehman Russ wanted to find something to, like, save the Emperor. Jack and Khan ran off into the fucking warp to try and save his people from the Dark Eldar. Yeah. Uh, Vulcan disappeared because he was very sad. And... Lionel Johnson, I think, just fucking fell asleep. Mm-hmm. I'm not even joking. Mm. Oh, yeah. Well, his steadfast clinging to everything being held traditional, plain and unconfucking conventional, yet wasn't as infallible as he wanted to believe. Lionel Johnson was just a mess. Being both a self-absorbed, spiteful and envious prick, and an honorable, courageous and dutiful warrior at the same time. Funny enough, Lionel Johnson is one of the two Primarchs that have come back. But, uh, <laughs> he's getting better. He originally just saw people as weapons and tools to be used and was pissed when they didn't do that. But yeah, he's... Yeah, the, oh. the thing about Lionel Johnson is he got in a fight and was really badly wounded that they had to put him in a coma. But, yeah, Mech's not wrong. He did kind of he was very headstrong and really prideful to the point where he would never really listen to those around him including his brothers or even his sons and it kind of came to bite him in the ass but in the current uh for in the 40k universe he's actually kind of mellowed down he's still an idiot in the aspect that he's headstrong but he's more willing to listen to people now yeah he understands the mistakes he made and he's trying to actively do better which is Real, which is actually an improvement compared to his 30k uh, ways he was acting. Yeah, he's actually been given the Emperor's shield and is learning to be better. Slowly but surely. Fucking confusing. <laughs> Jagat Icon was always so fucking reckless yeah. and constantly hyped on speed. <laughs> fucking Jagat Icon's whole thing is all about speed. Like, the idea of... The, his legion, the White Scars, literally hate the idea of being stuck on a ship because that means they can no longer go fast. <laughs> They're all speed freaks. And lastly, Corpus Corax was always so infernally fucking angsty. Honestly, most of the fucking Raven Guard, when you look at the heads for their models, they all look like they belong in a metal band. Because <laughs> they're all pale as hell and have like fucking, you know, that flowing hair. Oh, I say, my lord. Hey, what about something else? Don't you talk shit about my fabulous fucking hawk boy. He died for me, so be grateful. Yeah. Sanguinius was awesome. And he's actually my favorite of the Primarchs. But yeah. Sanguinius was another one of the Primarchs to die. He died fighting Horus after, like, literally defending the gates of Terra all by himself. for him, because I think Korn really wanted him, on, like, as his, um, as his follower. But now he has Angron, and he's just like, I hate you. <laughs> yeah. We went from beautiful hawk boy to you. Yeah. yeah. He hates his champion, her his demon Primarch. But yeah. Funny enough, uh, there was an interesting part where... Sanguinius actually fought Angron because Angron for the Traitor Legions was their ace in the hole. Did anyone hear that? I heard you say uh, he fought because Angron and Angron. Uh, great, great. I'll put this real close to me. But yeah, um, Sanguinius fought Angron, which the reason why is because Angron was their ace in the hole who had become a demon Primarch at that point. So what Angron did during mi or what Sanguinius did during middle battle was get let himself get stabbed by Angron just so he could grab his head and pull the nails out of it. <laughs> Which for a moment, for a single moment, Angron felt clarity, and then he said he felt unfathomable pain. Yeah, because isn't like Angron's uh, demon prince form or whatever? Like, isn't it 
isn't it constantly in pain because Corn made it so that the nails would make him go even more crazy than he was already? I going? believe so, yes. But yeah, the reason why uh, Ang uh, Corn wanted Sanguinius as his demon Primarch was because Ang uh, Sanguinius actually has this hidden rage to him that he just never really lets out and hates that part of himself. Hmm. He also has this thirst for blood that all of his legions share. They're vampire they're angels. All vampires. Yeah, they're yeah. all vampire angels. Funny enough, though, Commander Dante, the leader of the Blood Angels, does not drink any blood because he's setting an example for everyone. All right, yes, but he also wants to die. Well, yes. Oh yeah. Do you remember the presentation I did, Chrono, about the other two Primarchs? Uh, somewhat. Okay, what did I say about them? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't remember, of course. Hmm. I'm sorry, Chrono, we're gonna have to give you a 60 on the test. Okay. You haven't, you're making an F. You have to be sent back for another year. Oh, great. <laughs> cool. Thanks. This what happens when you play Emma Call thing. Oh but yeah, for the... <laughs> oh, it was so long ago now. I ain't, I ain't gonna remember that shit, anyways. <laughs> it's already on display, you dumbass. It's on the video. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you think I think he too? <laughs> well, <you're quite laughs> yeah. You already a man to do Animal Crossing. You can't just say I. It's been so long ago now. I. I mean, even <laughs> if I was paying attention to most of it, I probably most likely will not remember it. But, That's how shit my memory is. But yeah, what I told but you, you is... you know he's gonna ask a question, right? <laughs> now I know! <laughs> <laughs> and knowing is half the battle. But yeah, the reason... Uh, uh, Go back and watch the freaking video then. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's on YouTube! <laughs> yeah! I know! <laughs> anyway, uh, what I was going to say is for those... I don't know. The last two Primarchs don't actually exist. They're made for marketability, more or less. They're, uh... Okay. One was Loyalist and one was Traitor. That's all we know about when they both somehow died in the Rom Don Zeno side. And we don't know nothing else. No, we just know that apparently they were destroyed. There is theories uh, because of the lore that says that uh, Lehman Rust killed one of the Primarchs. Yes, there is also idea. Basically, their names were stricken from history, and we know that the Imperial Fist and the uh, that the Ultramarines suddenly got a boost in, uh, you know, numbers. So they're obviously mm -hmm. from there. And mm -hmm. one reason no one remembers them, not even their brothers, is because because Machador literally went into their minds and forcefully made them forget. In the lore, when he told, I think it was Dawn about them, he literally repli replied with such hatred and pain, no wonder you had to get rid of them. Which is like, I, I get <clears throat> you guys are trying to set up something or try to make it interesting, but unless you're going to tell us, stop it. Just to yeah, stop. Leave it yeah. a mystery. <laughs> honestly, Leave it a mystery. I, honestly, fan fiction writers have done a lot more than GW ever did with those Primarchs. Yeah. I was... uh. I yeah. was holding it back, but I almost screamed out lore whenever Fable said lore. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> the lore! <laughs> but yeah, the, I've actually read some really cool fan fiction about someone just making different Primarchs and having fun with it. Yeah, a lot of a uh, couple of homebrew uh, Legion uh, Primarch stuff is actually incredibly well done. If only GW would just take that and run with it, but they never fucking do. No, they have to have it the way they want it. And besides, it, yeah, it if was... someone made it, they can't. They they're gonna have to give them money, which they don't want to do. It's kind of insane, but yeah, they the reason the two primarchs are basically made. So like, if you're playing the tabletop game, you can add in, you know, those make you from the miss saying you're part of the mi the legion from the missing primarch or the lost primarch. Like one is known as the forgotten, and one is known as the lost, if I remember correctly. But yeah. Oh, you keep we don't talk off. about them. Uh, Jesus. Be 
because we don't talk about them. Right, I won't ask it. However, I just cannot understand why they betray you. I know, right. I mean, sure, Flowercard grew up on a planet full of chaos, worshippers, but that doesn't mean he could then start using his fucking brain. Especially once I came along to straighten him out. We'll straighten him out. Seemingly just it because they either were corrupted by chaos through Lord Gar, took too much offense when I told them I had some daddy things to do back on Terra, or when I tried to correct them when they were doing stupid things. Uh, the main reason Horus kind of went crazy is because of all the pressure that was put on. Because he was not only taking care of the entire crusade, basically all of the armies, where his brothers even had to report to him. But he also had to deal with, you know, his brothers fighting each other or fucking being stupid sometimes. Yes, there's also the fact that there's a character named Erebus that helped make Horus fall for chaos. And everyone's just like, alright, listen, if we ever get our hands on Erebus, we're gonna kill him. Yeah, in everyone the most hates Erebus. Way possible. All my homies hate Erebus. There's literally a meme <laughs> that just says "fuck Erebus." I literally put that on one of my slides that said "fuck Erebus." <laughs> <laughs> Fuck Erebus. I think I remember that part. Yeah, where Horus got stabbed with the poop knife, and then because of Erebus. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I'll be able to forget that one. <laughs> Why did you not tell them what you were going to do back on Terra? Well, what was I supposed to say? No, oh, yeah, this... I can't just tell my own children that I'm building a gate into the webway because I need some booty in Eldar <laughs> because the boots are cheaper and a lot less sharp. I'm sorry, what? I said, I can't just tell them that I'm building a gate into the webway because humanity needs some booting up in its transportation department <laughs> and Eldar webways are safer and a lot less sharp than warp travel. Oh, that's like... <laughs> oh, man. You suck. Uh, he tried to make what was a, a webway, which is basically, it's a lot easier and safer to use if it's really built. But, uh, it would probably have connected to the Eldar webways, but either way. Oh. I still fucking love that he's fucking <laughs> Eldar Prosser. I could not take oh, any risks with this project, <laughs> and telling my sons would indeed have created unnecessary risks. Their trust in me should not have swayed when I left. It's not like I'm demanding full access disclosure to their everyday lives, even if I am their father. I mean, imagine if I had, for example, stepped into Lionel Johnson's room and been all like, Hey, Sonny, how's building that homosexual nightclub coming along for you? <laughs> oh, yes! I totally understand. In fact, for those this don't... is returning to Terra to I need to explain this bit and why it's a joke. Oh. Uh, <laughs> the reason he made the homosexual nightclub joke is because the... Headquarters of the Dark Angels is referred to as the Rock, <clears throat> and there is actually a homosexual nightclub <laughs> named the Rock. Also, because Lionel Johnson is based off of Lionel Johnson, who is a poet who might have been homosexual, weird, and and died very young because he was like in days where that was unacceptable. And, uh, and didn't understand his feelings. To build the human webway, I guess you could also yeah. say that I was testing them to see how my sons would work together without me to guide them. As it turned out, not much better than regular humans left to their own devices. I see. Um, can I ask about another thing? You're going to anyway, regardless <laughs> of how I answer, aren't you? Even if all of your sons are off, <laughs> well, isn't there anything good about them? I mean, even the ones who betray you? Is there anything good you see in them? Well, now that you mention it. And that's where we end off. Mm. So, yeah, we're going to switch over to Dongan Rope after that. But yeah, that is, uh, well, we talked a lot about the Primarchs. This video is probably going to be over 30 minutes. And people are going to be like, why is the reaction over 30 minutes? You, It's only like a 10 minute video. Because we have opinions and we're allowed to state our opinions. I'm allowed to state my opinion yeah. that uh, that Lorgar was an idiot and that uh, Agron needed therapy, even though he was supposed to be the therapist. Honestly, I still state that like, I honestly believe that if the Emperor actually took the proper time to talk to some of his sons, especially the problem 
problematic ones, he could have probably found common ground with them, but Honestly, he was more focused on his own plans that it ended up screwing everyone. Yeah, he probably should have, you know, talked to Angron a bit more and told him not to put nails in his son's heads. He did try to find a way to remove the butcher's nails, but the thing is, apparently, because of how uh, different a Primarch's biology is, if they removed them, he would have been brain dead. So it's just like, oh boy. Yeah, that's... that's like, yeah. Also, uh... The Primarchs may or may not be made from gods. We're not sure. He, the, the Emperor might have literally ripped minor gods from the warp and stuck them in his sons. Yeah, because there's a uh, theory that says, and it's based on something that uh, uh, the Chaos God said, is that uh, he made a deal with them, stating that he would get some of the minor warp gods, but he would give them something in return, but because they're Chaos, you can't trust them. Because they could be lying, trying to say he betrayed them when he said this or that, so it's yeah. weird and up in the air. Anyway, off to Donganropa, where I think we're on